Hello everyone, hope you all are well. Wesley here today. I'm joined by Jürgen. Jürgen, how are you today? I'm well and yourself? I'm alright, thanks. Jürgen, what are we going to be doing today? Wesley, today we're going to take the customers through the process of cutting acrylic on their Croncroft TNC machine. Alright, let's dive down and see how it goes. Alright everyone, so here we are finding ourselves in scenario one. We very often see a lot of customers coming in saying they're what they're doing and why they're struggling to cut acrylic. So here's the first scenario on what we see that our customers want to do where they struggle. So as you can see, we're not using the clamps that come with the Kronkoff CNC machine. We have uh, tape on the machine uh, waste board and we actually have tape on the piece of acrylic. So what we do is we use super glue to, um, we put super glue on the tape and we basically glue the two tape layers together that we can get good adhesion of the material on the wasteboard. Jochen, what are we going to be doing for the first try? We're going to now attempt to cut it. We don't know our settings, we don't know anything. What, what would a customer first try? Exactly. Wesley, um, with the Croncroft CNC, you get fishtail bits. So we're actually going to be using those as a first attempt. Um, not with any specific speeds or anything like that. Um, we're just going to give it a go to see what the results are. All right, so we're going to run it at a slower speed and build our way up exactly. from there. Exactly, and see what, how our results improve. All right, let's see what happens. Jürgen, so what happened here? Wesley, clearly our spindle speed was too low. The spindle couldn't handle the amount of material it had to remove with that speed. Our spindle speed at this round was a thousand RPM, which is obviously way too slow. The material wasn't cut accurately, and thus we have a failure. Alright, so what are we doing? We're gonna make it faster. Yeah, for the next round we're actually gonna just gonna try a faster spindle speed, see if we can reduce our depth per pass and stuff like that, and see if we can get better results. All right, let's see if we can do it. Alright guys, so as you can see in that nice photo, uh, this has done better, but what we were looking for is a perfect circle. So Jürgen, what is wrong here now? Okay Wesley, so we raised our spindle speed, which obviously did give us better results. It was moving a little bit better, but I suspect what's going on here is our depth per pass and our feed rates might be too high. In other words, the, the bit is plunging too deep for the amount of material it's trying to remove. So what we're going to do on the next um, attempt is to bring down our speeds considerably and see if we get better results then. Our speeds? Yeah, that will be our feeding, our feed rate yeah. and uh, the spindle speed we're actually going to raise again because we did get clear, we did yep. get better results. So we're going to bring down our feed rate and our depth per pass. Alright, let's give it a go. Jürgen, yesterday we got quite a good result. Mm. Um, let's make it better. Agreed. How are we going to do that? Um, so first thing we're going to do, like I said in the beginning, you can use single fluid upcut bits. In this case, we're going to be using a double fluid upcut bit. We are going to be keeping a high RPM on our spindle, going to give a low feed rate and actually up our depth per pass just a little bit. All right, let's see what happens.
And so we have a perfect circle carving. Jürgen, what was the settings and the, everything that you used for this for everyone who's curious? Wesley, uh, for this we used the double flute um, upcut bit. We used a depth per pass of 0.7 millimeters. Our feed rate was roughly about 800 moles per second. And yeah, sp spindle speed was full speed. Got good results. All right, so we have accomplished our mission of Engraving a perfect circle. Yes, sir. Let's have a little bit of fun. All right, so let's try and cut a circle right through that we have a hole in the perspex. We can do that. Let's give it a go. So as you can see with those two videos, we've accomplished our goal. We have engraved a perfect circle and we have cut a straight through circle. So Jochen, we've done it, mm. right? So we have all of our right settings, but let's get a bit crazy. Yeah, let's, um, let's have some fun. Let's have a little bit of fun with it. Let's grab a new piece of acrylic mm -hmm. and maybe let's just engrave something and cut it out. And we can see what we can do with we that. We can do that. Play around with some ideas. Stay tuned, let's do something cool. Alright guys, so there we have it. We have done something fun. This is what it looks like. I'm going to twist it for the light to make sure that we can get it all. So if you guys have any other questions, you can message us at support at 3dprintingstore.co.za. We have gone through most of the more common mistakes or struggles that our clients come to us saying that they're having. Um, if you guys have any other questions or struggles, just give us an email there at support at 3dprintingstore.co.za. And everyone there will be happy to help. We hope that you guys learned something. We hope you enjoyed the video. See you on the next one. It's cold. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Yeah. We're going to have to redo this shot here. Sure. I'm stuck. Did you glue your fingers? <laughs> <laughs> I've got nothing on that dude. <laughs> we can't swing in this. No, I know. You can delete that. Is the lighting right? I think so. Let me know if the light's right. Yeah, yeah. Lights off. Lights on.